it's good evening here from Harvey Bay in uh, Queensland, which is about um, four hours north of Brisbane. Harvey Bay is well known for the birthing place for humpback whales, and quite often you will see dugongs and dolphins. There's a small um, Harvey Bay dolphin that quite often seen at, at the um, the bow wave of the humpbacks, particularly the mothers and their young born calves. Mm -hmm. We're currently um, up here. In fact, we've um, got some guests of ours who are just sitting below me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they uh, made a decision after several years of um, coming up and participating. They decided to come on board and charter a vessel. The lady above me, who's Andrina, has actually come on board these vessels and they usually come away for a week at a time and uh, they've been one of those bucket uh, list type um, opportunities for people who actually want to spend quality time out on the water and um, the most amazing thing about this location is that you can actually sail up or even steam up in our case we're sailing in steaming or motoring if you want to call it as such um, and once we've anchored up um, it's it's quite phenomenal that you can just be sitting there and you'd be playing cards you might be having a, an occasional drink you might be listening to music and then all of a sudden you hear a humpback whale come right alongside you and they blow there she blows and so um and of course um you hear that constant sound and you jump out and you want to take a get your camera and take that photo and then it gets to the second and third day and someone yells out there's a dolphin there 10 o'clock oh yeah right wait till it comes real close to the boat <laughs> so um the excitement sort of the adrenaline sort of comes off to the point you get really um overwhelmed by the fact that they're just around you they swim around you we've had uh, great opportunities here being at anchor and um and you, it's it's one of those things you know you've got to put on your bucket list you just dive off the boat and the water around here is so green and blue that um all of a sudden you'll hear this puff of um there she blows and it's it's a surround sound that goes right around uh, everybody who's um, participating and just simply watching it's just exhilarating so that's why we're here tonight um every one of us who's on the show tonight have had that personal experience of um being with the whales so first of all before we start um bringing everybody on board just want to give you this um, playback here of um this particular uh, scene, so you know exactly what we're talking about. Oh, wow. Right, so oh. to give you that impression there, that those two whales were probably less than 25 metres off the boat, yeah? Um, just, what can I say, yeah? But so first of all, I'll go to Andrea, uh, who's in the UK, and of course it's now just gone past three minutes past 10 in the morning over there in the UK and um, welcome Andrea. Good morning, good evening, hello everybody and thank you for joining us and it's lovely to see you guys especially Lisa and Cameron, good old friends and um, I'm with you in spirit, um, like you said I've done a few whale trips up at Harvey yeah. Bay and it's absolutely magic um, and just seeing them there just oh god just opens your heart every time what it does for me anyway um yeah so i'm looking forward to hearing your adventures what's been happening this week what's been your highlights um, and i know when you say about it night and i think that was for me um oh to be sat there quite on the evening and or talking and then you're this <laughs> and it's like oh my god and they're so close and you can just feel the vibration. I mean, I, I can feel the vibration now I'm, I'm saying it. Mm. Anyway, um, yeah, amazing. It just, oh, I can't wait to do another one. I don't know when or anything, but it's still on my bucket list to do more. So, yeah, so it's, it's brilliant. So thank you for sharing all the lovely videos and the pictures. And, um, yeah, there's so many of us that are connected with these beautiful sentient beings and what they're doing for the planet and humanity. So, yeah, so over to you. So tell us more. Well, I'll pass them over to um, Cameron and Lisa. There you go. All right, mate. Look in the camera. Otherwise, Lee Smith will tell you how. 
Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Look, again, we work hard and we love to experience many different things. We've had lovely experiences with Jeff with American Indian shamans in America. And, and we said, come along and let's let's have this time together. We've been doing it for about five years now, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, as, you know, we, we joke that I'm the Viking and, and Lisa's the fairy, <laughs> but, you know, I'm trying to, to, to touch wood, I'm like a piece of wood. But I can still remember the first time I came in close with the whales, I, I, I actually cried. I could feel their hearts. And... Um, We've been hooked ever since. Yeah. It is. It, um, there's something they call Harvey Bay, the Bay of Dreams, and there's a quite a surreal, ethereal feeling because it's uh, it keeps an incredible energy between the mainland and the island, and the whales are drawn there for a reason. They come right the way down from the top end, and then they come back out again, and. Um, we this the sailing is beautiful and the 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 weather's most of the time is beautiful and to be up here where honestly the beach is every morning it will your footprints will be the first footprints on the beach mm. so not only is there an absence of um, mass population of people you know often in everyday life we're surrounded by lots of people and lots of chaos lots of uh, technology lots of cars traffic everything so here there's an absence of all of that but it's filled up by this incredible energy of the whales and it's it's similar to if you've ever been around an elephant if, for those of you who haven't experienced the energy of a whale if you've been around an elephant their heart feels so big and it activates your own heart and in the five years that we've been here as you watch the whales in the distance going along or wherever they are they they tend to activate the heart and often people the first time they experience a whale energy will have a cry and we call it like a heart it's like the heart pops and it's like a it's an, a, an expansion of the heart that you've been with and no need to expand mm -hmm. beautiful really beautiful and we can feel them we, you can feel them as they as they come we'll be sitting as as jeffrey was saying playing cards or doing something else and all of a sudden you feel this energy start to come and you can just feel it you know just be Heading along out out past heading on their way in the bay or out the bay. Mm. It's, a, it's a deep privilege. It's a really deep privilege. And, and incredibly inquisitive. Not all, but a lot of them are quite inquisitive and they come up so mm. close. Mm. Very close. But you know, three years ago when you I got my mm. They do. They they it depends certain if it's a mother and a calf, they're not as um, playful because often the mother's protecting the calf and sometimes there's teenagers and they can be quite inquisitive but we just you know when we're part you know, with the boat hmm. yeah, it's um, an amazing scene uh, uh, listeners I mean um, Harvey Bay as I said is about four hours um, out of Brisbane it's on the Fraser coast and um, you've got a marina there Urangan and then you can just go through and thread your way through the the channels to get out into open water and um most people either head onto the right hand side and come up alongside fraser island which is the largest sand island on the on the planet it's um, 168 kilometers long uh, just pure sand um and yet you can come um and that's on the eastern side you can come out in the harvey bay and take the west side and go all the way up to Bundaberg and lady elliot lady musgrave it's actually at the start of the Great Barrier Reef, so it's a it's an amazing sort of playground for those people who wish to get out on a boat and and um, make an adventure. Uh, typical sailing uh, terminology is you've just got to be aware of the of the winds. So um, it gets open and quite exposed if the winds are coming from the west and the southwest, and if you get them from the northwest and, and north and easterlies. Fraser Island protects you, and so it's a great spot to be, uh, particularly here in Queensland. And it's in the winter period where we get great sunshine. And um, I know the hours may not be as long as you in um, England there, uh, Andrina, where the sun's going down at eleven o'clock with your daylight saving. Wow! Um, yeah, definitely. Queensland here, 
Yeah, well, here, as you know, that when the sun goes in at 5.35, you know, someone's just drawn the shadows in. It's like, yeah, movie time, isn't it? So um, it's a, it's a look, all I can say is that if you hear of a, um, an adventure coming out and you've got to put on your bucket list, the couple that are sitting here with me, Cameron and Lisa, they do Infinite Connections. I'll, I'll just put it up there. Have a look at their website and um, you'll find that they get out and about and um more than ever um highly recommended i mean today um the weather pattern has changed somewhat so four of us we went and grabbed the four-wheel drive and, and made the journey around fraser island just went up the champagne pools um ended up at lake mckenzie it's one of the purest freshwater lakes um here on the fraser island so um look whales dolphins um it's just terrible. <laughs> just an awesome experience so um but uh, andrea you, you just lead us on take it from perspective of an english um, woman um spending some time here in in the queensland particularly with these dolphins and whales and how it impacted on you oh it it god i don't know where to start really i mean because I was look, tracking back to when I first started um, fell in love with the dolphins and I think I was in Tenerife or Grand Canaria and I watched them in um, in a doing a show and what have you and then I've realized I've gone to so many places on my travels and I've always gone to wherever the dolphins are and then of course when I came to Australia um, of course, they do the day trips from Surface Paradise and other places, and I did the odd day trip and chasing them all around, and and that was phenomenal because. But we were on a big boat. Well, for me, being very petite, you know, we were on um, I don't know maybe fifty, sixty people on the boat. So I would be at the back, and then the the whales would come up around the front well by the time I got to the front I couldn't see anything anyway <laughs> but so anyway I, the opportunity came um to do a whale trip um it was something I thought gosh I'd love to do a whale trip um I just had no idea how heart opening how breathtaking the Oh, beautiful, the energies when they come around you, you, you can just feel um, the love. And they're so inquisitive and they're going around. And I know that there's, um, you're not as supposed to get within, I don't know what the distance is, but within a certain, say, 100 yards or similar. Um, but there's nothing to say to the whales that they can't come to see you. And this is what we found. We'd be all swimming and then they're going round and it was like whole oh, flip. It's something you have to experience. It's so magical. And just seeing this massive creature going by with just this little eye and they're like, you know, scanning you all around. And it's like, oh my God, you can't buy anything like that. It's just... Oh, I, I can, I'm so touched by the whales and dolphins and I've been so blessed um, since I've been back recently um, to connect with people that are doing whale and dolphin um, meditations and deep, deep inner work. Um, I've been gifted sessions with a lady called Jacqueline who's going to be a guest in a few weeks' time. And, oh, God, you know, the work that I'm doing energetically as well over here is is amazing and it's, so and it's funny because um a couple of weeks ago or was it last week we were gonna have a lady called Anna who's coming on next week um and I'd already been talking to her the day before about the whales and the dolphins and my experiences and then so she was planned to come on this week and then the next morning Jeff said, oh, can we change her? I've had an opportunity to go on the boat with Lisa and Cameron and I thought, oh, here they go. They're already stepping in, taking over the show. <laughs> um, so, so here we are, you know, and it's just amazing the synchronicities to do with whales and dolphins that I'm getting over here from different people. So 
they're at play on a bigger scale on the planet but oh yeah not envious of you guys but with you in spirit and yeah what a fabulous opportunity and i just say to anybody if you get the chance oh it's something that will live with you forever that will stay with you forever it's just amazing yeah so so what's been the highlight then so far God. you know some of the low ones as well in all in all honesty are you going to play something different? I was just um, you know, you have to say. Oh, hey. Hello. Side Yeah, you just have to be um, so quick. I mean, you can take still photos and then you've got to go and have a look later. But um, the video, I mean, all of a sudden someone yells out, you know, there's a whale there at 10 o'clock or 6 o'clock and you go around there and you got it on video and then they just come like a submarine, they surface and then boom, down they go. So unless you've um, got about 360 degrees of camera and you can just take one footage, I <laughs> think it's... Unless they come out and they they uh, do their big breaches, I mean, uh, oh, the breaches. yeah, the breaches are the most exhilarating things, isn't it? So, and I I pass you over the camera list because last had, year we, we 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 went in the yacht and then I said to Jeffrey, let's go camping. We came camping up here, and I had a three hundred dollar dinghy and an outboard. It was such a bad outboard, we could never get it started. And we went out in the middle of the bay, Jeff and I and Lisa's son. And we had 30 foot whales breaching right next to us. We was too scared to turn the engine off in case it didn't start again. But the whole thing of just having that thing so close just keeps us going, you know. And we're talking about favorite pop times. I, I love a lot of them, or a, a few of them, they'll lay on their side and you see their bellies, or they swim underneath you with them upside down, you see their bellies and they wave. And we, but it's that beautiful they're beautiful moments as well aren't they jeffrey ah oh, but um on tuesday no was it wednesday uh three of our group just jumped off the back of the boat there as you do that's that's what life's all about isn't it like wake up and jump off yeah, yeah. Of a morning swim. yeah you go for an early morning swim you jump off and and next second they're like oh my god what's going on and uh <laughs> and then they're coming up and next second, boom, they go down and you're waiting on well, where they're going to lob, you know, where they're going to turn up, you know. And um, the next second, you can see them coming under the water and they, you can see that big silhouette and just come, you know. I mean, the last thing you want is the bloody soundtrack from Jaws going in it, but it's just, <laughs> you can see them, they sort of turn over and they've got that, that what's in their belly as they go cruising past. And then you're on deck taking the photo and you're thinking, do I drop this bloody camera and, you know, do I jump in there or what? But, you know, sharing the experience of observing it and then being able to um, show the bit of video footage there where the whales have come in under the boat and then come underneath it. Um, our friends here have been swimming. I mean, I mean, what can you say? It's bloody beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Have, you, yeah. have you guys done any sound recordings? Not this trip. We haven't done that this trip. But the other night, uh, we could. I heard them all night. Can you come and sleep through it? But okay. honestly, it sounded like there was one right beside Jeffrey's cabin because it was on the other side of the boat, and it was a young. It, it sounded like a young child because it was very high pitched. It was like, ooh, ooh. it was. It was like it was looking for something or someone, and there was a lot of. Honestly, it would have gone on for twenty minutes. And then all of a sudden, a, 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 a deeper sounding came through. And it was like it just, after this deep sounding one came through, all of, of the young sounds kind of left with this big one. It was quite remarkable. Did you, did you hear that at all the other night? Um, it's just, it was like being in there, part of a family meal or something that we're having. A, a, you, know when you, you know when you go into um, sleep state? Sorry, I just turned on there. I might do this going like this thing. 
no, no, okay. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, you're in a sleep state and um, all of a sudden you feel like you're not inside your body and you you just sort of slip out of your physical body and then you, it's almost like you make eye contact with, with the eye of that, of that whale. So somewhere deep inside me, I know that what um, Lisa's saying was 100% on the money. It was, you just become so connected. I mean, yeah, yeah. And there's something to be said. They, they feel our joy and we, we um, you know, when we're singing or when we're playing or when we're in a playful mood and we get really excited, um, there's certainly a, a, a bigger response from the whales, well. like they're very responsive to energy. We had a young boy playing a didgeridoo and, and I almost thought I could touch the nose of the whale with my foot. It was so we close. Didn't, yeah, we didn't do that, but I'm saying it was that close. It was the nose of it was right. We didn't the, go to the whale. The whale came, came to, to us, us yes. So. I know um, what my last trip, um, gosh, it's a few years ago, but, uh, sorry, a few years ago now, um, and I went with Dr. Dij and Dr. Sh um, and Shimana Tara, and they had, we had, they had their didgeridoos, and we were doing yoga on the boat, and that we had all sorts of instruments, and, and they were just, the whales just loved it. They were around all the time. I mean, I think they were more intrigued in what funny sounds we were making compared to the sounds that they make. But um, it on even if people just did a one day whale trip, I think yeah, that's, that's the start as a taster. But I was blessed to go to Hawaii um, with Joe Notion and I did um, a dolphin and sound seminar and I'm not the greatest of swimmers because obviously swimming in England is, I've only been in a few times this year, <laughs> sadly, but anyway, it's too cold. It's like ice, <laughs> God, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but the first, when I went with Joan Ocean and we were on the boat and we would all do a meditation and we would send our love, love out. And then the next thing in come the, the dolphins and then, so I would be, by the time I got my flippers and goodness knows what, I was always the last getting in the water, whereas everybody else would leap in. Um, and on this, this day, and they said, we'll put you with um, Lisa and we'll give you a noodle. Well, I didn't even know what a noodle was then. I thought, what's a noodle? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's obviously a long piece of foam. So they put me in the water. And um, so I'm going along like this. And then... Um, and then the dolphins are coming around and then I had seven dolphins coming at me and I'm going along like this and like three went this side and a couple went under me and, and then and I could feel all these eyes on me and I was sort of just flapping away in the water. And it was the most, I'll never forget seeing, like looking around and experiencing them going all around me. It was just amazing. Just, oh, I, I, well, I just, I think I'm a dolphin at heart anyway, but um, yeah, I just loved it. And and I remember, you can remember Debs, and I don't know if you can remember Jeff, but before she passed, um, she went on a whale trip and the whale literally came up right the side of the boat and they she had a video and she said it literally looked her in the eye and she said it was a gift from God and she passed. Uh, I'm not sure but not long after it was like she was so blessed that she took that with her that experience but oh just magic <laughs> it's mm. it's something you have to experience in it you, how it touches your heart and you just know they're around you and you can tap into that energy and there's there's youtube videos with whales and dolphins and um yeah just magic so this is a lovely topic for me. It's just right up my street. Yeah, well, um, as I mentioned in the introduction there, we've actually seen uh, the small dolphins that you know, frequent this area. Um, bow wave in front of the, um, the humpbacks there is almost like they're protective of um, the newborn calves. And, um, and, and quite often it took us a while to work out, but we could really hear this really a bull roar um yeah 
<laughs> and one of our fellow guests here thought it was um well being the birthing place you know the mother was giving birth to a baby and she was going through her um birthing pains but um we've had it a few times eh? but, but what they say is that the mothers fill themselves up with food they go up to the tropics and have their babies up in the warm weather because if they have the babies in the down south they'll die of the cold so then the babies fill themselves up full of food and fat and then they come back to the cold so this is this is just a stop off place mm. mind you what 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 the um the, the boat manager said jeffrey was that um first the teenagers come early 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 july so they run around there the inquisitive ones and, and now at the moment there's a mother and calves and what the mother and calves at the moment are doing is hiding a little bit over this side to our advantage because very shortly it, the, the the males are around and they're all on heat so um that's about the end of september which i didn't know that so how many <laughs> how many trips a year do you guys do do you just do do you do more than one week at the time fifth, fifth yeah, week we, like, we just do the work yeah Mm. the fifth year oh yeah but how many one a year one a year okay so you usually booked every time oh, okay so um on this occasion uh cameron and lisa have actually um booked a fortnight so it's two seven day trips mm. okay and we've got a permanent book from now on mm. yeah so it takes you know you've got to take your head off to them and the fact is that I've come up here they've experienced it over a number of years and they realize that um you know it doesn't take much if you've got a network of friends and acquaintances that would like to share that so um and why not if you're on a, a boat in this case there's eight of us um including the skipper so um it's definitely not gilligan's island on this trip it's um it's definitely got the real mccoy here with um our captain Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Jimmy, I did send you I've sent you a um a video through Facebook Messenger just now. It's five breaches in a row that we saw. And there's oh, wow. such an incredible healing healing energy of the of the whales. It's particularly the breach, because the breach takes an incredible amount of energy that the whale is so huge and they they push with their tail. And their whole body comes right up out of the water and then they smash into the water. And it's like it has a, a massive, a whole full cellular cleansing feeling in your body as you're watching it. It's so exhilarating, isn't it? If you can, if there's any way you can access that to free and show that, that would be fabulous. And we were watching a particular boat. Uh, so there were about three or four boats just, just playing in the, just in the harbour. And all of a sudden, these whales approached this other boat, and there was, we could see that there were three people sitting up the top. And then one man was sitting down inside. And I said to Cam, "That the man down inside looks so sad." And I said, "I feel like the whales have gone closer to commune with this man." And what? Then all of a sudden, the whales just lifted up, and I happened to be filming, and we couldn't believe it. They got this massive big breach, right, like right beside this other boat. We weren't far from it. And then it did another one, and then it did another one, and it did another one, and it was quite quite remarkable. So we, after the whales had moved on, we made friends with them and sent it to them. But I'm hoping that you can show that, Jeffrey. Mm. Can you show that one? It's beside a... Yeah, no, I just want to see how to do that. It's, uh, did you get to see the boat? Is it... Yeah, yeah, did I. Um... Anyway, the, the, yeah, are you probably no and dreamer about the feeling once you see a breach of a while and there's fabulous oh. fabulous vessels up in harvey bay where you can come and go for a day trip out and i know one woman she's been coming for 32 years in a row to harvey bay and she gets a she stays on shore and she comes out on the whale boats there's huge whale boats you can go out on there's smaller whale boats you can go out on there's whale boat boats you can come out on with um where they'll take you kayaking and those sorts of things in and around the bay and mm -hmm. she's uh she actually had, uh she came so often that there was one particular whale that she always used to see 
and mm. they could tell by the markings of it that it hadn't it wasn't um, named because often a lot of the ma whale researchers will name the whales and they'll keep an eye on them and tag them just to watch their migration and watch their health and so she got to name this particular whale and um, yeah beautiful beautiful story and so she's she saw met that whale I think it was before she had her daughter and now her granddaughter's just met the whale as well so wow. she's got oh, wow. a really beautiful connection um so the Tasman venture just google while watching in Harvey Bay and you can get all sorts of beautiful um oh! It just brings out the best in people, I think. Uh, um. oh. <coughs> just to carry on talking, girls, and push. Yeah, and it's, it's a sunny experience, isn't it? It's not until you experience, like, when you're listening and you you know for people that have not experienced whales and dolphins it's only when you actually do a trip and experience and then you know the heart opening magic uh, of yeah. them being around you and look there's there's i think you know there's lots of beautiful opportunities to see the whales from burly heads you know don't you don't have to physically come to harvey bay you can see the whales okay. from a distance down on the gold coast or yeah. harvey bay yeah. wherever yeah. Byron Bay as well and the key is that I think the, di the difference in Harvey Bay is that they, they, there's a, they come and play more so they'll go all the way in and then all the way out again as well. I know um, when I lived at Lennox Head um, which is just on the edge of Byron we used to sit on the headland there and we would just watch them playing in the bay and just on the outskirts and just going past all the time I mean it was yeah. just heaven just sit there and you were in in pure bliss and I know one day I was down um at the end of Lennox by the tea tree lake and I was I was just stood on the edge of the dipping my toes in the water so to speak and then all of a sudden I could do this and like look maybe a hundred yards they were just out on the edge there like and i just stood there and i think oh my god like you know oh the whales are here like you know mm. you, you get so excited you're like a child aren't you you know mm. it's just such a feeling we, we did a, a channel uh, one time about whales and dolphins and one of the things that came through was they said that their sonar communication with each other actually went five it was it extended so far that it extended the healing capacity of the whales extended across the land about five kilometers inland so that and that you know people really love and and feel the healing healing power of mm. the, the whales from their their sonar and their energy and their ancientness and tom kenyon has got some fabulous work uh, related to the whales and Dr. Uh, the, the gentleman that does cry on, I can't remember. Uh, Lee name. Carroll. Yes, yeah, so Lee Carroll actually does some amazing stuff too with the whales. And there's Dr. Todd, I think it's with either Cardo. Uh, do you know his yeah. name, Todd? Yeah, no, Dr. Todd, but I don't, I couldn't tell you what his yeah, other name is. Last, but yeah, but yeah. Um, but he actually does some incredible channels of the whale sounds and they do a phenomenal choir who do amazing sounds and he does this light work and the people in this choir will train all year online and then they'll get together and make make these beautiful choirs and it's all so the, if anyone who's wanting to research this for the cry on books it's k-r-y-o-n and Lee Carroll is that particular channel. And then Dr. Todd, well, you'll find his surname through that. And when he does the channel whale sounds, it's like he's speaking and you'll every person gets a different message. Mm. Right. Right. Get me, get ready. This is fantastic, Andrew, and you'll love it.
almost took a happy pill that day. Mm. Oh! <laughs> goosebumps all over me. Thank you. Oh my God. That was a highlight that day. Wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> oh, much okay. Mm. And like I, oh, God, amazing. And then, like you say, like such big bodies, and now they lift themselves up and flip. It's just amazing. <laughs> you know, yeah. it poses the concept of. We, you know, we put judgments or I put judgments on things, you know. We, 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 I look at an ant and look at its significance and I look at a whale and, and I ask myself, are they a, a higher vibrational being mm. than us? Lisa? I, well, look, when I, I, any time that we connect with nature, I feel like we're connecting with a very deep intelligence and a very deep intuition and a very deep integrity. <laughs> and, it, whether you're communicating with a tree or or a, an animal that they have their own integrity and the, the deeper that we connect with these beings we're brought into connection with our own integrity and our own intuition much more deeply so if we have been sitting out here and not feeling being true to ourselves in some way then when we in connect in deeply with nature and and with the whales they've got such magnificent hearts and it brings, helps us to connect more deeply in with our own truth, which can be quite a shock because mm. all of a sudden people often refer to it being speechless, like there, there aren't words to describe the feeling because all of a sudden you're just so firmly implanted deep in your own heart, your own sense of your own connection. That's very powerful. Yeah, but, and I believe mm. there's a sentence to them. And so well, yeah. they've come through Hilla. We're out um, with a in the rubber dinghy and these dolphins came out oh, <laughs> all, all, all the younger people people were all like talking to the whales like you talk to a, a child using the high sounds oh hi come little dolphin or whatever and jeffrey's like oi <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh, wait me <laughs> well, they, but they came they did come over <laughs> Is your Lord and Master calling? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, There's quite a few of them come over. Yeah, it's cool, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. they've got their own, they can feel our energy. Yeah. They're definitely sentient like us. Mm. Have you I seen you, many uh, turtles? Yeah, Karen. Have you seen yes. many turtles? Because yeah. that's yeah. magic, yeah. seeing them like pop up and. And, you know, if I go back to Hawaii, my when I first got in the water, and I think it was Turtle Bay, but, um, and they, they were just everywhere. And then I'm just swimming out. And then it's like you've got guards of honor because next minute there's a turtle this side and that side, and you're going along and you could just see these eyes popping up and down. <laughs> they are, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, I don't know, we talked about whale and dolphin dreaming, but um, I wonder if they do have an impact on your dreams. So um, have you had an impact on your dreams there? Cameron, listen. For me, you know, I, I come for the fun, but, I, you know, I do get words of intuition often, and um, I believe I, as much as I come here for... The fun I come here for the energetic shift, and, and I think every time we come, because we, we leave as a different people, so it's not so much as my dream, but I, I just leave as a different person a little bit higher, a little bit cleaner, a little bit more in touch with what makes me this being that I am, you know. So I can't remember the word that came up the other day, but it said to me, and I went, Oh, that's a big word, I don't even use that. So a bit of listen, you know. Mm. I know that your dreams have been profound over later priests since you've been here. Do you want to share the dream that you had this morning? Yeah, the, um, this morning was really quite profound. I actually um, I went into the auditorium, it was filled with people, and I went right up um, to, onto the stage, and it was um, Michael Jackson. And uh, Michael Jackson said, Have you, Did you like my uh, song? Uh, Destiny. Destiny. 
And I said, no, 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 mate, I really like Thriller. I really liked um, Billy Jean. And he was quite shocked about it. And um, in, in, the end result was um, I gave him this almighty hug. Just imagine it was the best compassion and all that stuff. And I said, listen, um, do you think you can play um, a cover song? He said, cover. And I said, yeah, can you play um, Tears in Heaven? And he said, well, I need to get uh, copyright. I said, well, just get your guys when you do your show to put up um, your mobile phone number. And whoever's got the copyright can just give um, that phone number a ring and then um, they'll say, yeah, you can um, sing that song, um, Tears in Heaven, which um, anyway, so I was relating. And then, um, then what happened was I just manifested um, three glasses of um, liquid. It was almost like a milky colour. I gave it to him to drink, and then as I turned around, all these other people uh, in the auditorium, they all wanted to have a drink. So I was manifesting all these glasses with this um, milky liquid fluid, and I stepped out of the auditorium. So I came in, and I discussed it here with um, Cameron Lisa. And um, so we looked up uh, Michael Jackson, and Cameron did, and found out he did have a song called Destiny. And nearly fell over. It was <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> It's a very profound song. If you listen to it, Destiny, um, it's almost like... It's very relevant for what's going on with the lockdown yeah, now yeah. And, and the experience around the world globally and it's it's the idea of not, not making your life all about wealth and riches and the shallow things and reconnecting with nature and, and land and reconnecting with what's truly important. Mm. Um, very, very, very relevant. Very relevant. Yeah. And of course, um, one has to get on the phone and ring up um, what's that? Tears in Heaven. Mm. Richard Clapton. Eric, Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton. Clapton. today for you. I don't know if you've heard yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, that's a what would you call that type of dream? I mean, obviously, there's been an impact there with some. Um, the fact that you're not um, operating on a, a fear mode, you're actually operating on a, mm. a intuitive and inspirational and uplifting um, insight, and it's almost like you're becoming a what I could call a, a imagineering. Mm. You're bringing the two aspects of life together, imagination and then the, the engineering yeah, com component yeah. to actually create, yeah. But wasn't that profound, but, wasn't it? He actually had a song called Destiny. Well, maybe that's the message to get everybody to um, YouTube his song or whatever and listen to the words of Destiny. You know, there's a message for, in it for everybody. Mm. And, it's, well, and like the tears for heaven, you know, um, with all what's going on, that's appropriate. You know, some will understand that that's appropriate on some levels now as well um you know like profound messages mm. yeah they're pretty intelligent those dolphins and whales aren't they mm. but yeah. they, i mean they're they are in the solar system aren't they on a on a much bigger energetic field doing doing whatever they whatever they're doing but we just know that they're just not swimming in the ocean, making beautiful sounds. But have you done any toning and chanting, you know, like to them? Because that would yeah. be a good thing to do. That's what we, we did. We were doing toning and we were all doing it together and we were doing arms and, um, yeah, so that, that would be good for you guys to do. Yeah, we well, it, it's almost like you can't help it come out of you when they come around or with all the spills, but... Oh. Yeah, over the years we've done everything from chanting to singing. You know, not only does it uh, build the group energy, but it also and builds the harmony in uh, in us as individuals. But it builds the harmony as a group, and I and I'm sure that they enjoy the that feeling as well, the human yeah. feeling. And, and I mean, we all know that we're energetically attracting everything to us. You know, whether it's high vibration low vibration we are attracting it to us and our energy is more important than the words that come out of our mouth so um, I'm, I know that no matter how kind we are in one direction 
if we're not if it's not a truth in our heart we're not attracting that so likewise with the whales and the dolphins you know where we know that there's times where they don't come and 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 our energy might be scattered and then when we're sitting just peacefully that's when they arrive mm -hmm. and that's okay they, it's there it's, it's part of the whole journey jeffrey's but been affirming with with um his his uh, songs he keeps saying whales to the left of me whales to the right of us oh whales underneath us whales to the left of us <laughs> whales to the right of us and whales in the dream world Mm. In the bay. <laughs> we've, made song. we've made up a fantastic song with the ukulele yes and toning um at light language all of those sorts of things come out when the whales come close for sure mm. Mm. Brilliant. brilliant the thing is it's, um, when you come out here to seek uh commune because that's what it's like it's commune isn't it so instead of going to mass on a Sunday, you come out here and spend a week communing with the whales and dolphins and dugongs. And nature. Yeah. So um, the thing is that you, you don't feel like putting out um, a lure to catch fish, but, um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's another another story to, um, for another day. But um, we, we found a really interesting thing that uh, we had to talk to somebody else who was a, a local, basically, um at night here we had the light on at the back of the boat at the stern there and um all this sea life came to the back of the boat and um it was it was cameron who pointed out and said is that a sea snake and um yeah sure enough there's these um well foot long what are you saying oh yeah 60 you your drilling rushing and saying i'm not getting in that water <laughs> 60 <laughs> centimeter buddy <laughs> Yeah, these little sea snakes. Those never seen them before, you know. So um yeah, taking time out of everyday life to see something that's quite unique in nature, isn't it? And that also could... crabs. Watching crab swim was quite, quite amazing <laughs> as well. Yeah. But you you've got yeah. the beauty of the stars, haven't you? I mean the night's so clear mm. and the star system is like oh god. <laughs> right at the tip of yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and I'm sure that's a big part of how they know where they're going, how they, you know, at the right time of year to move. It's how all the indigenous cultures moved, following the stars, knowing what time to cultivate or plant, etc. Um, and there's a right at the head tip point where you probably remember Andrina at the top of Fraser Island is where they they often will breach to. To see where they're going or see where they go where they've come from and um just check to turn around the corner it's magnificent to watch from a distance and that's where we anchor that's the beauty of being up the north end mm. yeah hey um let's go and play that video that um, lisa gave us the five um breaches breaches yeah i think that's um well worth um another visit <laughs> just quietly was that yeah was that way or worse well it was um there's a boat wasn't it, just off us huh? no you, this was, you didn't no, get this was the last. Oh. that's a joke love sorry you said i you said about is it well worth and i said is it way or worth oh, oh come on <laughs> <laughs> I play on words there, isn't it? So I suppose anybody who lives in Somerset would be going to Wells. Mm. <laughs> or Wales. Or oh, Wales as well, yeah. All right, let's go and play this again. Here's my little whale. <laughs> oh! Woo! 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 Which is amazing, isn't it? Go on. 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 Go on.
So that was the boat that had the, the chap in it that wasn't very well. And it yeah. felt like they were coming and, and just kind of offering some sort of release of energy well, or they you know, get, help for him. They couldn't, they couldn't have got much closer, could they? Mm. <laughs> they were nearly in the boat. Say hello, Dave. Hello. <laughs> this is my little sentient being. He's he's 13 years old. I'm dog sitting for um, my son. So, anyway, little oldie Goldie. <laughs> anyway. oh. <sighs> right. Um, we can call it a night. Yeah. Well, that, that's been fabulous mm. to con connect with you on the on the ocean and and near to see the whales and um, yeah, no, uh, fabulous. Thank you for sharing. It's lovely to see you, Andrea, and I, and I know that we've had some. I know that you and Jeffrey have got a really great connection with the dolphins and the whales and. It, you know, you, you, you guys have that um, beautiful connection with all of nature, so we really, it's been a really privilege to, mm. to be here with you guys. Even oh, if you are on the other side of the world. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But not far away in spirit, eh? Mm. Yeah. I remember going to uh, Singapore to Dolphin Cove on Sentosa <laughs> Island. <laughs> I remember that well. <laughs> So, uh, they've got pink dolphins. Is it pink dolphins in it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pink dolphins, yeah. So there's about 300 people lined up, and um, this guy who's running the show there says, um, which one of the human kingdom wants to come and interact with the dolphin kingdom? <laughs> so, <laughs> you come over here. So anyway, so I had to stand out there in front along with this other woman. Right, now you got to perform to these dolphins. Right, so it gives us a hula hoop. So you have to do the hula hoop. <laughs> Get the hula hoop and start doing the hula hoop. Oh my God. <laughs> Very funny. Oh, funny it was, you know. So, because um, then they take you out to the, uh, and you swim out to the dolphins, you know, and um, you get the, you get to feed them, didn't we? Can't recall now, but certainly, buddy, um, out in the water with them, and buddy, you can, you know, run your hands over them, and oh, it's a bloody awesome experience. But take the Mickey out of you, that was the um, the highlight for the um, the other 298 humans. <laughs> but it's, it was unusual to see pink, wasn't it? I'd never heard of pink dolphins before, so. Yeah, it was very strange, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Mike Lee Smith's going to come online, so um, he said you're having a whale of a time. So, yeah. um, mm. well, tomorrow's our last day with the whale, so we, we've been going to bed about nine o'clock of a night and getting up at about six. We watch the sunrise and we're going to have one more day out in the middle and then, then camp or anchor close and then come back Saturday morning. So hopefully fair weather tomorrow and away we go. Lovely. That's been oh, it's been fabulous happening this Jeffrey. Mm. It's been really lovely to see you guys. It's, really, it's been obviously been a while because I've been back 18 months now. So um, yeah, yeah. Uh, what a journey, but anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> Yeah. But then we're, we're all on a journey. We're all going through our stuff, and and more and more people are connecting together and coming together, and and just helping in different ways. It's all good. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Help uplift people's. Um, yeah. Yeah. Inspire people. All right. Um, right. Well, thank you for um, coming. It's um, seven fifty-four in Queensland, and. Um, was that 10.54 in the UK? Yep. All right. And our friends across in New Zealand, 9.54. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for participating. And um, share your stories. Thank you. No, no. Yeah. Good Love morning to, to you. And a safe journey back to till we meet again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, bye. -bye. Okay, bye.